Hi everybody, in this video we're picking up with number nine and um, in our review today and again just as a reminder we have the test coming up tomorrow and so you need to make sure that you know how to do all these problems so I'm glad you're here. In number nine it says what is 300 percent of 33? Now in problems like this you can take the words that you see here and actually translate it into symbols but the two key words that we need to spot are the words is and of here's the word is here is the word of is means equals of means times in math when working with these um, problems okay so what well i'm looking for some missing number here i already know the percent here so I'll, I'm going to call that missing number n. What is n equals 300%? Now I need to rewrite 300% in decimal form. And remember, to change percents to decimals, move the decimal point to the left, two spaces. The decimal point is at the end of the number. Because it isn't shown, it has to be at the end of the number. If I move two spaces to the left, I get 3.00 or just 3. When you have percents that are bigger than 100%, you're going to get um, a value that's larger than one whole. And in this case, we have three whole. 300% is like tripling something of, that's times, 33. And again, you can use calculators on these problems. Uh, I don't think you're going to need a calculator for this one. By the way, of 33 was the third part of this here. We have what is n equals 300%, that's the 3, of 33 times 33. Uh, do you think you can multiply this mentally? What does n equal? Well, 3 times 33 is 99. So what is 300% of 33? Said another way, what is triple 33? What do you get when you triple 33? You get 99. Number 10. Now we're talking about estimation and benchmark fractions. 65% is close to which of the following benchmark fractions. You know, when I look at 65%, that's really close to two-thirds. That's our benchmark fraction that we would use if we saw 65%. See, 33 and a third percent is one-third. 66 and two-thirds percent is two-thirds. These are ones that you need to memorize, the thirds, okay? And and see, by memorizing these, I recognize, hey, 65% is really close to this two-thirds value of 66 and two-thirds percent, okay? So yeah, it would be two-thirds. Some other benchmark fractions that you need to know would be like one-fourth, one-half, three-fourths. Those you need to know for sure. Very, very important. Uh, and there are other ones that are good to know, too. Your, um, your fifths, for example, one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths, and, uh, and your tenths as well, like one-tenth. Very, very important to know. But, yeah, 65% is really close to two-thirds, 66 um, and two-thirds percent, or 66.6 .6 repeating percent. Number 11, 42% is close to which of the following? benchmark fractions. 42% is close. There's my squiggly equal sign. It's close to 40%. And the benchmark fraction that matches with 40% is two-fifths. So 42% is close to, to two-fifths. The nice thing about these problems is uh, on the review and on the test as well, they're multiple choice. So you can just look at your multiple choice options and figure out, all right, which one would be close to 42%. You can look at it in, in the reverse manner as well. But again, I was mentioning up here how it's good to know your fifths. You know, one fifth is 20%. Two fifths is 40%. Three-fifths, you're going to see the pattern here, is 60%. Four-fifths, of course, then would be 80%. And these are good ones to know. Okay, so 42% is very close to 40% or two-fifths. Number 12, estimate 
68% of 180. Now the key with estimating is to come up with a benchmark fraction. Uh, and we also are hoping for something that will be compatible in this case with 180. And 68% uh, is very close to two, two thirds. Remember two thirds is 66 and two thirds percent. Or you could say 66.6 .6 repeating percent. Yeah, I mean, 68% is just a little bit larger than that. And so now, can I estimate what two-thirds of 180 is? Actually, 180 is very easy to divide by 3. We can easily split 180 into three parts. If you were splitting 180 into thirds, what would go in each part? Well, 180 divided by 3 is 60. You'd have 60 here, 60 here, 60 here. Total that up, that's your 180, right? Now, I don't just want one third, I want two thirds of 180. And if you take two thirds of 180, you're, at, you're taking 60 and 60, that's 120, isn't it? So if you're estimating 68% of 180, it's gonna be close to 120, which is two thirds of 180. This is more than this by just a little bit, so it'll actually be just a little bit less than 120, but that's a very good estimate. All right, number 13, what is 45% of 60? We did a problem like this earlier. Um, what is 45%? All right, so the key words we want to spot are the words is and of, because we are going to be rewriting this problem translating these words into symbols, making it into an equation that we can solve. What is, some number is 45, we are, we're already given our percent, 45% of 60. So some number is, is what we're looking for, equals, is means equals, 45%, all right, so we did this part, 45%, we need to change that into decimal form by moving the decimal point, one, two spaces left, and that would be 0.45 or 45 hundredths of 60 of means times in math. So times 60. And at this point, then, you may use your calculator to finish this problem. N equals uh, 60 times 0.45. What would that be? That would be 27. So, yep, our answer here is 27. 45% of 60 is equal to 27. All right, um, next problem. Number 14, what percent of 48 is 36? This time I'm not looking for a number, I'm actually looking for the percent. We're missing the percent here. And so when I'm, look, when I'm writing down what percent, I'm just gonna use the variable P this time instead of the variable N. Here I was looking for a number, that's why I chose to use n for my variable. Here I'm looking for the percent, so I'm going to use p for my variable. What percent, p, of 48, there's that word of, and remember of and is are the two key words we're, we're um, watching for in these problems. Of means times, so times 48, is 36. Is means equals, so it equals 36. So I'm translating the words into symbols. I'm writing myself an equation here. P, what percent, times 48 of 48 equals 36, is 36. Now notice this time I cannot just take 48 times 36. They are not being multiplied together. 48 is being multiplied by an unknown percent. I don't know what that percent is. What I need to do is uh, I need to solve a one-step equation here. I need to undo multiplying by 48 because I want to find out what P equals. I want to isolate that variable. The inverse of multiplying is dividing, so I need to divide by 48 here. That will undo multiplying by 48. They're gone. So P equals, but if I divide the left side of the equation by 48, I need to do the same thing on the right side of the equation, divide it by 48. P equals now 36 divided by 48. You can use your calculator 
and do 36 divided by 48. Yes, it's 36 divided by 48. I know the first number is smaller than the second. That will give us a decimal answer. And we end up with 0 0.75 when we divide those. Okay. And, uh, but we're not done because we want the percent. And what we have found is the decimal equivalent to that percent. To change the decimal into a percent, you need to move the decimal point to the right two spaces. One space, two space. And that gives us 75%. Hey, you know what? Just a little side note. When we had 36 out of 48 here, because 48 is the whole amount, 36 is the part. 36 out of 48, if you were to simplify that ratio, that's 3 fourths. And guess what? 3 fourths, you probably know, is 75%, right? So it makes sense, doesn't it, that it would be 75%. What is 5 tenths of a percent of 400? You know, we're doing the same thing. We're just translating the words into symbols. Is of, those are the two key words here. What is, now I'm looking for a number again this time because I'm already given the percent. So I'm just going to put n equals, is means equals. Then I'm going to rewrite 0.5% in decimal form. And be careful, it isn't 0.5. It's 0.5%. To change that percent into decimal form, you must move this decimal point left two spaces. And you have to fill this extra space with a zero, so it's 0.005. Or five thousandths of 400. So times 400. Okay? So what does n equal? Well, it looks like that's going to equal 2. n equals 2. Okay? So what is 0.5% of 400? What is one half of a percent of 400? You know, 1% of 400 would be 4. So a half a percent would be half of that. And half of 4 is 2. So my answer does make sense. n will equal 2. But you can use your calculators to multiply 0 0.005 or 5 thousandths times 400. All right, number 16. 4 is what percent of 20? I'm missing the percent this time. So for my missing percent, I'll use my variable. I'll use the variable p here. So I'm just going to write is of those are the key words here 4 is 4 equals what percent that's p of 20 that's times 20 now notice again we're not multiplying 4 by 20 it's some unknown percent times 20 that will equal 4 we have a one step equation that we need to solve we need to undo the multiplying by 20 we can divide by 20 we can do the same thing on the left side of the equation, divide by 20. So P is by itself now, and what does it equal? Well, now we divide, be careful, don't do 20 divided by 4. We want to do 4 divided by 20, which is 0.2. I should put a 0 in front of that, 0 0.2 or 2 tenths, right? This is not our answer, though. Remember, we want the percent. This is in decimal form. To change decimals into percents, move the decimal point right. One, two spaces. We'll have to fill this space with a zero. And so we end up with 20%. Okay? So our percent here, P equals 20%. Okay? Um, that's all I have time for in this video. I will pick up with number 17 in the next video.